G'day and welcome back to the channel. A bit of an update on what's been happening around here in the last few weeks because I haven't been very much on the tube of views. I've been busy, been busy. First of all, my wife's had a bit of surgery, so I've had to look after her uh, with the help of some of the kids. That's been taking up a little bit of time. But more importantly, I've been working on this, the what I hope was going to be the near final version of the ADSB alarm, the, the, the little box with a little radar screen that tells you when manned aircraft are in the area, so long as the manned aircraft have ADSB fitted, which they all should. They can't grizzle and bitch and moan if they if drones don't get out of the way. If they don't have ADSB, all drones in the USA weighing more than 250 grams will have to have remote ID as of September this year. So I think it's only fair that we require, we say, look, all manned aircraft should have ADSB. It's our responsibility to get out of their way. How can we do that if we don't know they're coming? So fit ADSB and we will build these and we'll know you're coming from up to five to ten miles away. And so we can make sure we keep out of your way, keep underneath or land or whatever is required to make sure that we deconflict the airspace when a manned aircraft comes through. Now this little thing, you've seen it on this channel many, many times, not in this form. Now, this is, um, that's the first sort of final version. This is the original version, which was obviously not really suitable, dangly bits, circuit boards on the back, that sort of thing. It wasn't really designed for people to reproduce. So I have made it much simpler and cleaner and 3D printed a case for it for people that want to build their own without having dangly bits and also makes it much more reliable and more compact and easy to use. So the other thing I did was I spent a lot of time not only 3D designing the case, you know, doing all that sort of stuff and printing, a lot of 3D printing. I've got so much waste, <laughs> waste here. So um, yeah, I did all that, but um, I also spent a lot of time optimizing the code here, working on the code, because I wanted to make sure it would, would run on the widest range of hardware configurations, because you can't always get everything all the time. Our Raspberry Pi 4s have been like hen's teeth. The, the supply is freeing up a little bit now, and by the time we get this rolled out for the northern summer, I think it'll be a lot easier to find a Raspberry Pi 4. But bearing that in mind, I'm also doing a version 4, excuse me for a moment, reaches out a shot, bing, this is the Raspberry Pi 2W0, Raspberry Pi 02 W. I don't know, it's written on there and I can't read it, Raspberry Pi 02W, that's what it is, uh, which is a much smaller board than the Raspberry Pi 4, but it's not quite as powerful, so I'm optimizing some of the routine, so it will run on this, and that means it'll be a much smaller, you can see the difference in size, a much smaller unit than the Raspberry Pi 4 based one, also it'll use less power, a lot of benefits to that, but I could have just gone on and on and, and you know, chasing uh, a sh ever shifting goal, but I thought, no, we've, we've finalized the finalized the design in terms of the software and everything to and now I'm just polishing putting a case polishing up the code um, getting rid of a couple of little bugs because this thing has had I think it must be going on for two years of testing in the field now so it's pretty reliable pretty robust in terms of the way it functions so all I've done is basically tidy up the loose ends take out some of the debugging code um, make it more flexible in terms of the hardware it's operating on and then Pretty shortly, this is all going up on the rcmodelreviews.com website where you can download the software images. You can download the source code for the software. You can download the STL files for the case. And at that point, everybody can just run with it. And you can build your own, whatever you want to do. If you don't want to build your own, I'm pretty sure there will be companies out there that will be making money out of this. I'm not making any money out of it. It's not my job to make money out of this. It's my job to make sure that the hobby is protected and the hobby is safe and everybody's safe. So what better way than to give model flyers a piece of kit that's going to warn them whenever a manned aircraft comes along. This is one of the big complaints and the, the worries that the regulators have is that all oh, these drones pose a threat to manned aviation. Well, not if you've got one of these and not if manned aviation have got ADS-B fitted. So it really puts the ball back in the court of manned aviation, doesn't it? If we all have these, we can say, if you don't want to have a conflict with a drone or a model aircraft, turn your ADS-B on. And if you don't want to turn your ADS-B on, don't complain. <laughs> it doesn't, ob doesn't uh, remove our obligation to get out of the way, but Really, seriously, this has to be a two-sided coin. We can do our bit. Manned aviation have to do their bit as well. They can't just sit around and complain. If we're going to do this, they've got to take the initiative and say, even when it's not legally required, such as in Class G airspace, we're going to have ADS-B fitted because it makes sense. It's safety. It's all about safety. At least it's supposed to be. Anyway, so interestingly enough, the other day when I was working on this, something happened. I was sitting here at the desk doing some code development and... Bing, this, the, the ADS-B alarm went off, which is not unusual because it's picking up within a, you know, within about a 10 kilometer radius of where I am, it's picking up aircraft. But this time it was uh, a police helicopter. And I thought, oh, I'll go outside and have a look at that. So I rushed outside with my camera. Here's the police helicopter. It was circling around the neighborhood for, for quite a while, probably at least 20 minutes. And I came back inside. I thought, oh, I'll have a look on Flight Radar 24. 
But when I fired up Flight Radar 24, you couldn't see that helicopter. It wasn't on Flight Radar 24. It was on the ADS-B alarm. It was beeping away. It had triggered the ADS-B alarm. But Flight Radar 24 wasn't reporting that it was there. And the only, well, I can think of two reasons why this might be. And this is why, again, having this is a super, super safe thing to do. Because Flight Radar 24 sometimes blocks the position or the, the fact that an aircraft is there. They do this, I think, probably, uh, what is it, Elon Musk probably paid to have it blocked on Flight Radar 24, his jet or whatever, you know. But more often with police and so forth, they don't want evil people seeing that they're coming in their helicopters or where the helicopter is. So they will say to Flight Radar 24, we don't want you to track our aircraft. In which case, they never appear. It's like magic. They're just invisible, even though they have ADS-B on. The other possibility is that if they're flying at low level, which they were when they were circling over the neighborhood, um, they may not be within the range of one of the ADS-B receivers that is are connected to the Flight Radar 24 network. So effectively, they're flying below the Flight Radar 24. They just don't appear. Whereas if you're standing there with your own receiver, you'll pick it up. So again, this makes the handheld or the you know, on your belt ADS-B alarm far more reliable and safer than relying on a network service that may not be able to get good coverage in the area you're in. So yeah, more bonus points for the ADS-B alarm. So that's where we're at, that's what I've been doing. Now obviously because I've been doing that, I haven't been making a lot of videos, which means I'm probably going to earn next to nothing out of YouTube this month, which is a bit of a pain. So if you feel inclined, you could always um, have that little thing, what is it? It's a, um, a thanks button, you could click that with a couple of bucks to help this along, um, or you could join the channel or you could help me out through Patreon um, to offset the loss of earnings because I'm spending all my time on this thing at the moment because it's nearly summer in the Northern Hemisphere and I'm sure a lot of people will want this even if just for the peace of mind of knowing they're not going to be gate crashed by some low flying manned aircraft um, when they least expect it. Anyway that's it thank you for watching um, it is going to be fine tomorrow apparently so I may go out the field and do some flying or at least film other people doing flying because you know I can't do it now because mm, I I haven't paid my money so I don't have any skills or knowledge or understanding and my attitude to safety is so bad I cannot be allowed to fly out of within four kilometers of an airfield. Thank you CAA. So I will just have to film other people doing that. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for watching guys. Thumbs up if you like the video and um, what else is it? I don't know. All those YouTube -y things that people are supposed to do. You do that to this. Whatever. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I've got to get back to work. This is a priority project. Bye for now. Overregulation is like a tumor. It's killing a hobby. It must be terminated. Now!